we finally got our weekly and our monthly candle close and let's just say it was very bullish now we are going to analyze this talk about it and address what's going to be happening next but first welcome to the channel everyone my name is nick for those that are new to the channel hopefully by the end of this video you do become a subscriber so fear and greed still around neutral territory not too bad overall bitcoin having a little bit of a bounce in the market we're going to talk about that um what i would love to see is ethereum kind of taking over here soon uh we will address the overall ethereum chart here in a minute or so but as we look at the 24 hour gains there is some altcoins having a little bit of a nice bounce in the market now talking about xrp hbar icp casper you can even talk about qnt all of them they are having a nice bounce in the market and this is off of the lows now i will say this right now in the discord all of the discord members knew that we were going to have a significant bounce in the market i did put out a weekly um breakdown of the overall charts especially in terms of where we were headed on bitcoin and we did get the candle close that we wanted to which i also did tell you guys on x and i did make a video about as well let's be honest it's very easy to take positions in crypto but it's extremely hard to actually have a game plan in place when the time comes to take profits and that's exactly why i released a completely free exit plan that you can apply to literally every single position that you take in crypto and the best part about it is that it's completely free all you have to do to get access is go to the link down in the description below and claim your access now what are you waiting for capture those profits um the top 500 24 hour uh span gainers and losers we can see some solid gains across the board now yes a lot of these are still bouncing back off of their lows but just to like grab axler for an example right up 14 percent on the daily this is what the one month looks like a lot of these are just bouncing back but i am expecting them to start having their bottom printed in on the chart which a lot of these already have their bottom printed in they're a little bit oversold which is why i said like now is the best time to be looking into a lot of these old coins that are extremely oversold that have incredible fundamentals behind them and connections and axler definitely was one of them and i did tell you guys about it but regardless we are now starting to see some old coins bouncing off of the lows which is pretty much printing in a major bottom and on the weekly and on the monthly candle close they did close right around major support now i will say this as we really look at july because again it is now july i said on x july is setting the stage to be one of the most bullish months for the entire crypto market eth etf discussions are now heating up with the predictions of inflows s1s being approved and trading beginning in the first week of july now we don't know if they're going to be you know trading in the first week but that's the narrative um now i did get an update which i will talk to you guys about here in a second regarding the eth etf discussion but i said if we do see the etf approval happen in the first week old coin holders you need to buckle up ethereum will start to lead the market and steal the show away from bitcoin now i do think that old coins regardless of the eth etf approval or not are going to have a big month in terms of july we'll talk about why but I said we will witness bitcoin dominance drop significantly from the moment on and we will watch erc20 based projects follow ethereum closely too from that point we just watch us alt season unfolds at a very rapid pace and we should also see bitcoin hit 80 to 100k by the end of the summer now over here from eric we do see unfortunately think we are gonna have to push back on our over slash under till after holiday sounds like sec took extra time to get back to people this week although again very light tweaks and from what i hear next week is dead because holiday equals july 8th the process resumes and soon after they'll launch and this is regarding the eth etf so basically a, a delay on them um and this is because of the uh, the sec basically saying hey we need resubmissions regarding the s1 forms and this is the deadline is by july 8th so seems as though first it's like the half right the first half of july is where we are really kind of looking into the eth etf discussions really kind of heating up having the ethereum etf approval and that trading by the first you know half of july we don't know when this is going to happen right we could 
speculate. We can guess all day. It doesn't really matter, right? This is just a narrative that is still putting a big spotlight on Ethereum. Everyone's still focused on Ethereum. We'll probably start to see a lot of people, you know, betting on Ethereum as well during this time, which is still going to, you know, push us into phase two of alt season, regardless of what we get. So that's what we are looking at now outside of this, right? I did put out a post back in um, back on uh, June 25th, and I said, just got back from a trip. We closed above 60K and even better above the 786 retracement level on Bitcoin. I have the Bitcoin chart open here. I'm going to talk about it, but I wanted to reiterate what I said on the 25th. I said, this is a solid and ultimately a good sign. Now we must reclaim 62.5K in the short term to confirm this being the bottom, which in my opinion, it is. Bitcoin at dominance continues to drop while Bitcoin continues to move higher too. All coins will, will probably begin a major wave in this market to retest their March highs or even potentially break over them. I told you time and time again, bottoms will never feel like bottoms. The entire sentiment has been so negative and for the most part is, has felt, or um, it has felt like a ghost town since March. If this truly is the bottom, 80 to 100K comes next. Enjoy the ride. Now, listen, guys, we got the close over the 786. On the daily, on the weekly, we closed extremely high above the 786 and the 62.5K level that I was talking about, guys, we closed over it on the weekly as well. And the best part about this is we have our significant lows back here in May. We now have a higher low printed on the chart, which is a very good sign. Now, the big thing is, we want to see a weekly candle close well over 70K. That will print us a higher high in terms of the structure. The next key is closing over 71,322 on the weekly. That will be very, very bullish, but we have some work to do, right? Initially, we want to actually get a close well over like roughly 64K. We want to push above 64K, get a weekly candle close above 64K. Then we target 67,000, 68 point, almost 6K, then 70,000. Roughly, you could say like 70, you know, 1,000 or so, because it's like right around almost 71,000 regardless because of these candle wicks in between here. Um, but we are looking at some key levels here. These are the three key levels that I'm watching for before we target almost 72K up here before we ultimately break over the March highs on Bitcoin. But overall, the structure is very, very bullish here, and I'm very excited about it. Now, I also have two posts for myself. And, you know, again, a lot of you are probably going to disagree with me, and that's totally okay. I actually like when you guys disagree with me. It's totally fine. Um, I like educational, you know, discussions where everyone has their own opinion. Again, I'm not going to be right all the time. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I'm not right all the time because nobody is. It would be ridiculous for me to come on here and say, hey, guys, look, at, I'm right all the time because I'm not. But anyways, back in May, I said old season starts mid-June, beginning of July. This is my prediction. And I personally see the market really heating up this summer. I'm still expecting a de-risk towards the end of the year as I'm anticipating a top in quarter four of this year or quarter one, 2025, the latest. The next bear market won't be the same as previous ones with upcoming regulations, so I wouldn't want to be left bag holding after this cycle. Have a percentage you allocate to specific holdings for moon bags, depending on entries, but I would definitely be cautious holding on to bags. Now, just recently, a lot of celebrities and major influential uh, people have been coming out and saying, hey, like, what crypto should I be buying and launching scam coins? I said, we are definitely only a few months away from the top. Again, in my opinion, as we really look at the indicators, they're there. Three to six months max, and that's my opinion. You have celebrities popping up left and right. You have scam coins launching every other day. Alt season typically lasts three to six months, and I think that we start next month. I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. Now, as we really look at this, everyone's going to look at the liquidity cycle and say, absolutely no way our top is going to be late 2025 2026 and that's because as we look at the global liquidity cycle it should peak around september 2025 right and that's going off of this global liquidity cycle chart now although yeah we could follow this to the t every single time it's not that accurate again i don't like looking at this chart and saying like hey i'm gonna base all my investments off of i should be selling by september of 2025 when this peaks no, that is ridiculous. We look at the chart 
and we analyze what's happening in this space. Now, one thing that I will say is, yes, I have been following the liquidity index around crypto. And as we actually look at this, right, our liquidity in terms of crypto USD liquidity, right, it was heating up back in November all the way into the new year. And you could see that this did not top until April of this year. And it was roughly like the middle of April. Now, we already started to sell off during that time. And as you guys can see, liquidity started to really, you know, drop. Now, this is on the weekly. On the monthly, this looks a little bit different, right? Because we could we could see we could see that um, liquidity has slightly increased into, of course, the new year. But we're nowhere even close to the 2020 to 2021 timeframes. Now, do I think that liquidity is going to heat up very, very quick and, you know, become huge during roughly like the end of this year? It might. But in my opinion, liquidity is not nearly as strong as going back to 2020 into 2021. But this could also be the fact that like we're waiting for the liquidity to really increase. And what is going to be those catalysts for that? Is it going to be printing? Is it going to be, you know, the Treasury doing something in terms of uh, like the the bond buyback? Right. Because that's what we were looking at. We don't know what it's going to be, but I do think that liquidity is going to improve drastically. But this is a key thing that I have been watching for. Now, if we do push into quarter one of 2025 and we start to see this really heating up like we did see back in 2020 into like 2021, that will be great. But I don't think that we're going to see the same liquidity levels that we saw back in 2020 into 2021, because, again, we had the black swan. We had the pandemic, right? Printing was going absolutely crazy and parabolic. I don't think that we're going to be in the same exact uh, situation like that. But again, I'm mainly looking at a top in the market by the end of this year into quarter one of 2025. I would rather, you know, miss out on selling the exact top and, you know, have everyone say like, look at you were wrong. Then, you know, be late to it and say, hey, oh, well, we topped. Now I have to sell at 50 percent less profits. I'd rather take my profits when they're there and uh, be, you know, sitting comfy in profits. As simple as that. But as we look at the others, uh, money wise, dominance wise, and I have a few other charts, but as we look at others, this is excluding the top 10. So this is like mainly the altcoin market. If we look at the market cap of this sitting at 200 and almost 36 billion dollars, I'm watching this and waiting for this to break over roughly 200 and almost like 48 billion dollars. Once we flip this level and you guys can see why I'm looking for this to be flipped. This is going back to March of 2021 before we ran all the way up past almost 465 billion dollars once we flip this i'm watching for this gap here to be filled around roughly 307 billion to almost 335 billion once we're there and once we flip this area i'm expecting this to move very very quick to the upside of 465 billion dollars we might have a little bit of a sell-off maybe a rejection but after that i'm really kind of looking at almost one trillion dollars for the altcoin market in a very short amount of time now i know that a lot of people have been saying like oh, all right well you know in terms of altcoins we're probably going to go to two trillion plus i don't think so in terms of outside of like the top 10 right outside of the top 10 if we're including the top 10 which i do have that open over here it's kind of a, a very similar situation, right? We're still in a solid uptrend since going back to November when the market really started to heat up. And we have this gap here to really kind of flip, which is right around 700 to almost $740 billion. Once we flip this, the same situation over here in terms of others happens over here where we run up to 838 billion. Once we flip this, we target 933 billion. And then after that, we really kind of look for this next area, which is right around 1.6, almost 4 trillion. Now, outside of the top 10, those old coins will make up almost $1 trillion of this. But I do have this area here at around two to two and a half trillion dollars where I will DCA out, DCA out of old coins. Now, remember, this is all of the old coins, including even those in the top 10 outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they should make up about roughly $2.5 trillion of the market. So again, don't think that I'm looking at this and saying, wow, Nick is expecting only less than $1 trillion for old coins. No, I'm expecting two to two and a half trillion, but we need to make sure that we are de-risking once we start to see some of these higher levels, like one point almost $7 trillion being targeted. That way we you know, are taking some profits on the way up. But outside of that, right? Others dominance, right? I'm looking at others dominance. The first area that I'm looking at 
to flip is about roughly 11.06%. After that, we have a gap here to fill, and that is right around roughly 15 to 17%. Now, back in January of 2022, we saw old coins making up over almost 20% of dominance in this market. This time around and this alt season, I'm expecting alt altcoins in terms of those outside of the top 10 to almost make up 27% of dominance. I don't know if we're going to go that high, but I'm watching this closely because again, we know that Bitcoin is losing the shininess factor to it. The retail knows, like retail sector knows that Bitcoin is not going to make them, you know, rich. So they look at altcoins. That's why I do think that altcoins are going to steal the show in a very large way this time around. And as we look at Bitcoin at dominance right now, by the way, the reason why I'm really looking at others' dominance is because I do think that this chart is basically bottomed out and ready for a big move, aka we are looking at alt season happening this next month, July. And if we think about that, and as we look at Bitcoin at dominance on the weekly, right, we closed right around that bottom trend line. Now it's teasing a loss of structure. And we've saw we've seen this before, right? Like even going back here to the May 27th candle, we saw this slightly, you know, teased. We saw it just teased again. And now we're on this next weekly candle for July 1st. And we're waiting to see if this is going to continue to bleed out. The target to really kind of break and lose is 52.17%. After that, we are looking at these levels down here around roughly 35 to 41%. I do think that this time around, we could very well target those 2017, 2018 levels, which is all the way down here at about 35.4%. And if we go lower than that, then that will be very significant. But overall, if we're talking about 20% being usurped from Bitcoin, so basically Bitcoin trading at about roughly in terms of dominance now, right? 34%, 35%, the midline here, right? That means that others will probably have around this 26, almost 27% dominance factor to it. Now we have to watch this closely. We have to wait to see what really happens. Um, but I do think that dominance around Bitcoin is going to, to to really kind of be usurped in a very large way for old coins to really kind of steal the show. Um, because again, retail is not dumb. They know that Bitcoin is not going to make them rich unless they're already rich and they want to throw a, a ton of money into Bitcoin to potentially make a 2x return. But overall, to really kind of summarize things, right? The number one thing that we're watching for is some significant levels on Bitcoin to be broken, right? Uh, the big thing that I'm ultimately, you know, really looking at is a flip of over 64K. After that, we really want to see a close over this. Um, and I do think that similar to the May 13th weekly candle, we'll probably start a very impulsive move to the upside like this. But once we break over that March high, that's when the real fun begins. But so far, as we look at dominance, as we look at Bitcoin, and as we look at altcoins, I do think July is the month that this market is going to wake up in a very, very large way. The Bitcoin weekly and even the monthly candle close, guys. The monthly candle close is very significant because as you guys can see, we close down here in terms of two monthly candles right around $60,634. And now we have a monthly candle close above 62.5K, which is giving us a macro higher high or higher low, sorry. Um, and now we look for the higher high on the monthly, which is we want to get a break over 67.5K on the monthly candle close and well over $71,300. That way we can continue even higher. But so far, this looks very, very bullish. We're kind of in a bull flag formation right now on the monthly. And uh, this has been, you know, four months of just sideways price action chopping and everyone's getting so panicky. They're getting so terrified. The sentiment is so bearish. The market's basically dead. Nobody even wants to look at this market. They're all speculating on if alt season's even going to happen. And just so comical to me that we still have this uh, thought process as a retail sector, because as we look at all of the factors here, the stage is set for a much larger move in the market and we're just waiting for that. And it's not so much about waiting for Bitcoin, it's watching Ethereum as well. 
And as we do look at Ethereum, I have been following this closely and I've been given my um, thought process out in the Discord. This was my path before we even ended up breaking down into these levels down here. And this path has been working out so far very, very well. Um, I'm waiting for Ethereum to actually move to 38, almost $3,900 before back testing this midline, AKA flipping resistance into support and then continuing even higher. Again, setting the stage for Ethereum to kind of steal the show. And even as we look at Ethereum dominance, right? This thing is sitting at resistance. We're waiting for this to break over resistance. The more it retests this resistance level, the weaker that resistance gets. So that is going to give us a big run up to this upper uh, trend line, ultimately breaking over this trend line and stealing the show. Again, phase two of vault season basically beginning. Now, as we do look at Ethereum Bitcoin, guys, again, just look at this chart. We have major support down here, multiple taps of this trend line, just waiting for a big break over it. Again, that's why I've been telling you guys, as we hear this discussion around the Ethereum ETFs, it's only providing more and more fuel for Ethereum to push even higher, pushing us into phase two of alt season. And once we are in that phase two, it's all eyes on other altcoins outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys more free content. If you guys more than welcome, follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord on the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.